Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. June 27th, 2024. Let's get into it. First story I wanted to try to help you out with is uh, a financial story. And it's, uh, it's actually quite astounding. Um, you know, I, just like you, I, I, I had a mortgage or I still have a mortgage. <laughs> And of course, uh, you know, I went through a divorce back when I broke my neck. My wife, uh, while I was in the hospital for three months, uh, moved into the house, stole everything. And uh, of course, when I came home, a crippled uh, old man uh, with a broken neck, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a rough time in my life. So you can live through anything in life. And uh, so I kind of thought, you know, and then I, I had to pay her uh, $40,000 in equity for the house. Uh, so that I could get my sole name on the title. And then when I went to switch the title, <laughs> it cost me $300 or $400, I don't remember, to, to actually title the house in my name uh, because she did a quick claim deed over to me and I thought the whole situation was done. And I'm just telling you the story because you might live through something like this. So um, recently, um, her and her lawyers came after me and uh, she had gotten notice that she, her name was still on the mortgage for the house. Now, I hadn't really thought about it. Of course, I have the mortgage. I hope you do, too. I had more paid up six months in advance. Uh, she certainly has no financial obligation for the, for the mortgage. I mean, my house is worth uh, uh, almost six times what the mortgage was. The mortgage was down around about 48000 46000 somewhere around in there. House is worth 300000 um, so, you know, I, I told her, I said, well, you know, what are you worried about? I said, once, you know, my lawyer, and I have a lawyer, I hope you do too. Uh, he'll, he's the executor of my estate because I don't have any family. Uh, unfortunately, everybody's did. But, uh, and he would, I said, well, he would have sold the house. And of course, the first thing he has to do as the uh, executor of the estate is to pay off the mortgage. So what are you worried about? Well, my lawyers have told me that we need to come after you. And you need to get your name, my name off the mortgage. And of course, you know, first thing I did was I contacted the mortgage company and I said, look, man, I, you know, how do I assume the mortgage? Oh, you can't. Only thing you can do is refinance. <coughs> well, financial advice. Don't be refinancing a mortgage, especially, it, it, you know, my mortgage rate was 3.25%. You think I'm going to refinance at, at, at 8 Whatever, whatever it was, 8.5, and that's with an 850 credit rating. I would have been insane to refinance that mortgage. So, you know, basically I had to draw down on my my savings, my Roth IRA, my IRA. You know, I'd, I've been moving funds around, and then I issued a check for the mortgage two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Now, when I was making mortgage payments, and, and by the way, I'm going to call them out. It was USAA.com, and USAA is supposed to be looking out for veterans. Now, from USAA, when I make a mortgage payment, it usually goes through in about uh, three days, three to five days. Let's just let's just go on the outside. Most of the time, it's about three days. So I issued this giant check, because, and I told the mortgage company, I said, "Look, you, you you've got a great customer here. Why do you want to lose my business?" Well, I understand they they're only collecting three point two five percent, and I've already paid down all the amortized interest. So they're like, "Yeah." They gave me the, the the big double barrel, excuse me, I didn't mean to put up the, the finger there. And, uh, and they said, well, you know, we challenge you. Let's see if you can pay off the mortgage. Now, they didn't put it that way, but that's basically what was their attitude. Uh, and I imagine most people can't pay off their mortgage. And I said, well, look, you know, I've got the money. I said, I, I don't understand why you don't want to continue to make money on this mortgage. Uh, whatever. I, I, so got the funds together. Check issue two weeks ago. Guess what? So USAA, I had the deduction on my account. All of a sudden, it disappears. I'm like, well, what the hell happened to the deduction on my checking account? <laughs> Where the hell did forty six thousand dollars go? You know, I mean, I mean, it's good because they didn't, you know, I I didn't lose the money. It was just that the the check no longer existed. So you know, I contacted them and they said, well, you know, the check is in the mail, and uh, that's all we can tell you. Okay, all right. So the check was supposed to arrive, I don't know, two, three days ago. And uh, so I've been kind of waiting to see if it clears. 
I, so then I try to contact the, uh, the mortgage company. It's uh, Mr. Cooper. I'll call them out. And uh, they're like, well, we don't know anything about the check. What, what, what could have happened to it? Well, thank God I didn't write the check personally. I don't know if you follow uh, Johnny Bravo. Uh, there was a guy who wrote a check, and it actually somebody captured that check in the mail, and they changed the amount from, I mean, it was like an $800 payment or something like that, and they changed it to $45,000, and deducted it from his Bank of America account. <laughs> and he, well, and they, you know, a lot of these old people, they don't keep tabs on their accounts. I mean, if you're not logging in about every other day or maybe once a week at least to check on your finances, but he let the thing go for over a month. Well, their policy was that because uh, the, the check was rewritten for $45,000. The guy lost $45,000. <laughs> and Bank of America gave him the big double barrel and said, oh, hell no, you should have contacted us before a month. Uh, you're responsible for that 45000 Well, I don't think a check cut from my bank and sent to a mortgage company uh, that I would be responsible for if it's disappeared in snail mail somewhere along the way. And, it, and then the question becomes, why did they have to send it snail mail? Why not just do an electronic transaction like they had been doing for my mortgage payment? I guess, well, it was the amount of the check. We're not used to cutting $46,000 checks. Well, why not? I mean, the money's in the account. All right, that's just a kind of a financial story. But what the moral of the story is, is that we are in a debt-based economy. And I want you to understand how these financial institutions, they got their meat hooks into you, man, and they're going to do everything they can to screw you every way possible and you got to be on your guard i mean you need to get out i mean the, the economic ninja i give him credit i mean he he talks a lot of garbage i don't, I don't agree i haven't taken any of his courses uh, because i just haven't felt the need I, I feel like i got the same knowledge that he has now i could i benefit from his courses courses sure and but do i want to pay two hundred a thousand dollars for his course no you know, I, I feel like I can go out with credit unions and get a, a real good home equity line of credit if I need it. I don't need it right now. I can pay off my mortgage. You know, I, I pretty much exist. But what I'm telling you is, is how difficult it is to exist in this debt-based economy. They don't want you paying off your debt. I mean, that's how how desperate they are. And just, uh, anyway, so let's get into the news Um so I, I really wanted to go through a couple of posts, and uh, the, the first one, by far, uh, you know, I, I have people that tell me, well, you're just a Trump, Trump, Trump guy, you're a Trump, Trump, yeah, I'm going to vote for Trump, but Trump did some things wrong, man, and he's not correcting them. He he was for the, 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 the jab, okay, the jab, I don't want to say the word, I, that, that uh, so-called uh, vaccine that wasn't a vaccine. Uh, he has never come out and said that maybe he was wrong. He's never come out and said that that freaking troll Fachi should go to jail for killing 10 million people and for locking people in their houses and telling us all to sit six feet apart and telling everybody to wear masks. Huh? Where's Trump on that? So the next big thing was uh, we just, uh, and I'll just read you Robert F. Kennedy, and I, and I think he's on the right side of this. But my, my comment to this is, where is Trump on the tragic act of war by the warmongering Democrats? And if you're not familiar, we just dropped a freaking cluster bomb on a beach in Crimea. And, uh, and we're, we're going to get into my tweets, but I wanted to read you Robert F. Kennedy's uh, statement. Uh, because this is what Trumpets should be coming out with. I want the dude to win the election. He needs to come out and make statements about this stuff. Uh, you know, he, he, Robert Kennedy's got the upper hand on this, although Robert Kennedy had, doesn't have a chance in the election, unfortunately. Uh, I, I still like the guy. I just, I, I just like Trump. Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of like Trump's good on about 60% of stuff, wrong on about 40%. You know, Kennedy's is right on about 30 or 40% of the stuff, and he's wrong on... <laughs> 60 or 70 percent of the stuff so it's kind of like you know okay i i gotta go with the lesser of two evils here but anyway a u.s missile launcher allegedly made by lockheed and targeted by a sophisticated system only by americans can operate within ukraine the mgm-140 attackums system exploded about six missiles above russia crimea 
and release cluster bombs across an area, landing on a civilian beach and causing over 100 casualties. It was like 124. I can't remember how many kids died. I think it was five kids. Uh, but let's just keep going. I, because I'm, I'm glad he put this statement out. Dead and injured, including children. The CCTV footage captures the moment when the missile's sudden emissions rain down over the crowded beach. The word that describes this is terrorism. It's an act of war by the United States against Russian civilians. The war mongering Democrats! The war mongering Democrats! Let's just keep going. Only Congress can legit legally declare war. They should stop the uncontrolled, uncountable, and reckless hawks directing an impaired. And I got people trolling me saying, well, it's the Republicans too. I said, there's. There are a few good Republicans. There are no good Democrats. And that's keeps my statement that I keep telling them. And they just keep trolling me going, well, the Republicans, it's, it's the Uniparty. It's the, yes, it's, of course it's the Uniparty. But at least there are a few good Republicans. But let's just keep going. Otherwise, it's up to you in November, Kennedy 2024, Rand Paul. And then this is Rand Paul's statement. U.S. supplied cluster bombs were used on beachgoers in Crimea yesterday killing at least six and injuring more than 100. Moscow has warned that such actions will not go unanswered. This is a NATO attempt to provoke a Russian reaction to justify further involvement. Next moves, watch below. And of course, that's his video. I'm not going to play that for you. Uh, but let's go back to, to uh, some other comments. Um, well, I, I, by the way, this... <laughs> I will, I will play this video for you, and I've kind of learned how to get the phone up in front of the phone or the, or the, or the camera here. This is a video that North Korea just put out, and uh, my comment was, I wonder how the new Democrat woke military will do against these troops. And let's just watch some of that video. Let's see if I... Oh, yeah, let's get it back to the beginning. All right, it goes on from there. <laughs> but I wouldn't you love to see some of these uh, these tiny female uh, recruits that are in the U.S. military or some of these transgender uh, uh, folks uh, doing shit like that in the U.S. military? <laughs> That's why I was I was loving this. Uh, all right, let's just keep going. Uh, Russia has now formally said that it will retaliate against the warmongering United States Democrats at a time. In place of their choosing. This is where the Biden administration has led us. Please fight. Uh, and then, of course, uh, let's get into a couple of other posts here. Russia has now stated that they are no longer at a state of peace. Now, notice they didn't say they're at a state of war, which is a good thing, but they're just no longer at a state of peace, which is a hell of a dramatic statement when you think about it. You know, when you're no longer at a state of peace, that means that, you know, you're thinking seriously about war. But anyway, so let's just keep going with the United States. Russia now says the United States is an active party in the Ukraine conflict. This is now an official statement delivered in person to the U.S. ambassador. Be afraid, you American mushrooms. And when I say American mushrooms, I remember during the uh, Iraq war in 2003, I, we got all our news from Al Jazeera, <laughs> Fox News, uh, CNN back then, you know, I didn't know how corrupt the media was back in 2003, but I just knew that we weren't getting any information. And of course, even our command, you know, you would think that they'd be coming in and briefing you from time to time on what's going on with the war. I had no clue. I didn't even know when the, when the soldiers marched across the border into uh, Iraq. I mean, it was crazy. I was just down at Jabber Air Force Base. Uh, this is Sergey Lavrov, um, and Judge Napolitano has been all over this, if you want to watch his channel. I'm just going to read it for you real quick. Uh, the U.S. is responsible for this massacre, and they will get an answer. 
All flight missions for American attack on missiles are programmed by American specialists based on their own U.S. satellite intelligence data. Therefore, the responsibility for the deliberate missile strike against civilian population of Sevastopol lies primarily with Washington, which supplied this weapon to Ukraine as well as with the Kiev regime, from whose territory this strike was launched. Such actions will not go unanswered. Um, yeah, and then I just, I, I, all I, you know, by the way, go, go back, uh, you got to check out, I was, uh, I posted a video on the Democrat Mafia. Um, it was crazy. I was getting, man, I was going like, man, this one's going to go viral, man. I mean, I was, I mean, I'm watching the numbers tick up, you know, because, you know, it's kind of exciting when you post a video. You think, well, maybe, maybe this is the one that's going to make me famous, you know. And so I was watching 100, 200, 300 impressions. It got up to 1,000. It got up to 2,000. Then guess what? X dropped it down to <laughs> zero. <laughs> so you can't find me on X. And at that cyberset guy on X, go look. I mean, you'll see that. I get zero impressions on my videos, but anyway, I, and of course on YouTube, I, you know, search for that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. You can't find me there. The only place I'm not censored is Rumble, but it's hard to get any traction on Rumble. And especially when I'm censored on X and I do post on Getter and I'm also on, um, uh, uh, Truth Social, but I get no traction there. So anyway, it's for what it's worth. I mean, it don't matter to me. I, this is all just a hobby. It, it's not like I'm trying to make money at this crap. Um, let's get back to uh, my um, my uh, bookmarks. So let's get into the news just a little bit so we can get over. Um, um, Vladimir Putin at a meeting on shipbuilding issues. And I just want to read this briefly to you. And I, See, these are the things that our government needs to worry about. And this is why I say Vladimir Putin. They say, oh, you're a Putin. You're a Putin fan. Well, he cares about his damn country, man. I... I I appreciate the fact, I mean, he may be a, a totalitarian thug, as most people that paint him out at the bees probably killed some of his political rivals, Bergosian maybe being one of them. But I mean, this is, this is, these are the things that concern him. So I just want to read this to you. It's very brief. To increase the combat stability of naval forces, special attention must be paid to the speedy implementation of remote threat detection systems, including those from unmanned aerial vehicles, I mean, not only the control of airspace by air defense systems, but also the Im improvement of surface and underwater surveillance systems to combat uh, naval enemy robot systems. This is necessary to protect our fleet from possible attacks already at distant approaches to naval bases and areas of operation of our ships to develop reconnaissance aircraft of the fleet to build up those forces and means of conducting an electronic reconnaissance and electronic warfare. We must also assess the condition and needs of a naval aviation and coastal missiles. Can you imagine Joe Biden saying something like this? <laughs> Hell, I would even like to hear Trump say something like this. And it just goes on from there. And he gave a whole speech about how, you know, they need to, I mean, and that speech is right here on, on X. And th these are the things that we need to worry about. So uh, this, this goes into, uh, from Simon A-T-E-B-A. -E uh, he's the, the um, South African uh, reporter, if you don't know who he is. Uh, and he says, um, breaking, outraged Justice Samuel Alito explodes after Supreme Court dismisses case against Biden's White House, pressuring social media companies to censor what they deem disinformation during the COVID and 2020 election. Says America might regret the decision says White House pressure cannot be dismissed as mere persuasion. And, and I could go on and read the rest of it, but uh, basically, uh, if, you, if you know Robert Barnes, uh, he said that uh, Barrett, uh, who Trump, by the way, nominated and put in the Supreme Court, she was going to be a massive disappointment. Of course, Roberts, uh, he's a Democrat. Uh, he got in there, uh, even though he was nominated by a Republican. And uh, I can't remember the third, and of course the other justices lined up, and they said that this case had no standing, that uh, basically tech companies can censor you and me, which they do. <laughs> I'm obviously censored by everybody. But, uh, and so it's a very big disappointment. Um, unfortunately, um, Barrett, uh, she's a damn Democrat uh, that Trump put in there. See, another mistake by Trump. You know, I mean, don't think I don't harp on uh, the mistakes Trump's made. Uh, this is Peter Sweden breaking. New study finds 23% increased risk of Alzheimer's disease with the 
the COVID mRNA injections. Do you think the mainstream media will be reporting on this? Oh, hell no. <laughs> In fact, this video will probably get banned just for me uh, reading that. Um, uh, breaking, Yemen unveils a new hypersonic ballistic missile, the Hatam 2. I wonder if that came from Russia. Huh? You think you think Russia's arming Yemen now with some more advanced technology? Uh, they want uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, our carrier fleet uh, in the in the Red Sea might want to be just a little bit more afraid at this point. What do you think? Because uh, we've been sending attackums to to Ukraine to attack inside Crimea and kill kids. I think uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What do you think, uh, Geoman? Ukraine forces lost over 4,300 soldiers uh, the last 48 hours. This is a fully manned brigade, or two brigades in current configuration, because most of their units operating with less than 60% due to lack of replacements. Uh, this is, of course, reported by the Russian military uh, MOD, um, military operations. And I... Uh, can you believe the numbers? I don't know. I mean, they've been pretty accurate so far. Uh, can you imagine 4,800 people dead? Think about how many people died in 9-11 and how it affected the United States. The Russians just killed 4,800 Ukrainians in the last two days. I, I, that, that, that number is just, it's beyond my imagination. And yet, the Ukrainians are still gathering up uh, men off the streets, if you ever watch those videos, they're force conscripting them, uh, giving them 48 hours of training and sending them to the front lines. I mean, this is a freaking meat grinder. It's unbelievable what's taking place. And then you get Lindsey Graham going, oh, that's the best money we've ever spent in the United States. I want the Ukrainians to fight to, to the death of every Ukrainian. Well, they're Slavics. He's a freaking racist. He don't care. I mean, it... Nobody in the United, I mean, especially the Democrats, the Democrats don't care about Ukrainians. They want them all dead because they're Slavics. They're racist. You think that they, they you, do you understand how they project? They call you a racist. They call your toaster racist. They call your dog racist. But no, they're the racist and they just want all the Slavics in Ukraine to die. I understand. I, I know where it's coming from. Uh, let's see. Breaking. Hours after NATO named Kenya its biggest partner in Africa, the country went up in flames. <laughs> Massive violent protests broke out in Kenya after the Kenyan parliament was stormed by protesters furious over tax hike proposals. Protesters set fire to the national government uh, con 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 constituency's uh, development fund office near the capital in Nairobi. Armed guards surrounded the Kenyan parliament a building while a vote on the draft budget is taking place inside the parliament building right now as smoke bombs, tear gas, and rubber bullets have been fired. Well, at least it's rubber bullets. I'm, I'm glad they're not using regular bullets. Uh, at the police struggling to maintain order, according to local media. Unverified footage appears to show protesters holding up live bullet casings that, well, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> live bullets were fired into the crowds. I just had to keep reading. I'm sorry. Uh, eight dead, 50 injured in Kenyan parliament protests. Barack Obama's half-sister was reportedly hit by tear gas while taking part in the protests, according to CNN. President William Ruto has, has said he wants to talk with the protesters and that he's, he is proud of them. That's pretty cool. Uh, every day the U.S. breaches some new red line in proxy war against Russia. The Biden administration will allow military contractors to be deployed to Ukraine. Now, uh, what is a military contractor? Well, a military contractor is basically a U.S. soldier uh, who is out of uniform. Uh, they could still be getting a salary from the United States military. And, and I did uh, contracting. Uh, so let me give you an example. So on the weekends, as a weekend warrior, I am in the U.S. National Guard. But when I was working full time for the for the um, Air Force, you know, outside of my weekend duty once a month, I'm considered a contractor. So these are the, the U.S. soldiers uh, that will be heading over to Ukraine soon. Uh, I don't know how many numbers we're going to send. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I tell you what, if I was a contractor, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't want to go to Ukraine. I can tell you that. But, you know, you're, but you're still a military soldier, even though you're considered a contractor. 
So you either follow the orders or you're probably going to get court-martialed. And hell, you might end up in Leavenworth breaking rocks. So, so they might have no choice but to go to Ukraine and die, unfortunately. Uh, Canadian prepper, no matter what the platform, just know they're collecting our data. And then this is a good point that he makes. Uh, because, you know, I, since I am censored on X, you know that, that Elon is, is giving all of the data to the U.S. government and eventually I'll probably get arrested and, and put in a concentration camp, just like you will if you stand out against the government. But you have to. You have to make a stand. you got to do the best you can. But I'll read you what he had to say because it's very valid. Collecting all our data, X included. And when the time is right, our number will be called. Yep. All of us who stand against the machine, our number is coming up. I understand it. I do it anyway. Am I brave? I don't know. I haven't got that long to live anyway. So, I mean, if you're a young person, uh, that's why I respected the students so much when they were standing up against the machine. Um, they have a huge life ahead of them, and yet they still were protesting against the genocide taking place in Gaza. That, uh, But anyway, the power structure actually wants a dissident platform where people feel comfortable expressing what they truly think. So they you know, a lot of people think on X it's a dissident platform and uh, that, you know, the information's not being collected. Uh, believe me, every video I've posted, everything, it all gets gathered by the NSA. I understand that. The CIA knows who I am. I'm probably on the Ukraine death list, but let's just keep going. This is historically precedented in all uh, budgeting totalitarian regimes. And, and if you look back on the history, China did the same thing uh, when the Mao regime came in. Uh, they told people to express their uh, their concerns and their dissidents, and then they went out and killed them by the millions. So it's it's happened before. I think Stalin did basically the same thing, and we may have the same thing happen with the Democrats, uh, the totalitarian Democrats here in the United States. And so he's got a good point. There's a lot of historical precedents for this, especially in China. That was horrible what Mao did. I mean, he basically told people, you know, Say what you want. We want we want all the feedback. We want everything. And then as soon as they had gathered all them names, man, they they went out and purged them by the millions. I mean, they they just they wiped out, I don't know, a couple million people. I mean, it was it was horrible. Uh the crackdown comes a few years later. You also want to keep tabs on people and don't want them to actually actually organizing locally in secret off grid. Well, Luckily, we do have some militias and stuff that are organizing off-grid. And if you're off-grid, stay the hell off-grid. That's my advice to you. Uh, don't be like me. I mean, I'm going to die regardless. In fact, you would use a platform like this to co-opt movements and lead them astray. We're actually, and he's got a good point, effed. Uh, you, you put the word in there. And this is all just mental masturbation. Elon Musk will retire and the data, well, he'll retire to a, an island in the Pacific and the data will get passed on to less benevolent dictator. You're not smarter than the system. No, I never think that I'm smarter than the system. I know the NSA has all my data. I wrote a book about it sitting right here. It's called The Internet is Infected. And I'll be rewriting this book at some point. I just haven't had time. Good God, I can't even pay my damn mortgage. Uh, and then so... Um, Kim.com, she says, don't be a hypocrite. You keep attacking Elon Musk about his free speech platform while using his free speech platform for your free speech. Provide us with some evidence that Elon is one of your lizard people. Uh, I, I agree with the Canadian prepper. You're not safe on X. You're not safe on any platform. You're not safe on Truth Social. You're not safe on, uh, certainly not on Getter. Uh, if you're going to speak out, you're, you're putting your life at risk. And that's what our forefathers did. Think about it. Thomas Jefferson, you know, all of our, our uh, many of our founders died as a result of signing the Declaration of Independence. But, you know, at some point in life, you've got to put your life on the line and stand for what's right. And if you're incapable of doing that, I would say that you're going to lead a very miserable and unhappy life. That's just my opinion. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. 
Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down.